I'm Rob Riley, and you're watching Variant Edition. Hi, and welcome to the Variant Edition. I'm Ricky. And I'm Mike. We're the first weekly video podcast show covering everything in the comic book world. From previews to comics, reviews to comics, anything in the comic book world, we are going to cover. You can find us online at VariantEdition.com, or you can check out our MySpace profile at MySpace.com backslash Variant Edition. So, this week we have our summer reading picks. Uh, we all did a version of that. We all picked three uh, collected uh, graphics for you guys to read while you're on vacation or whatever, doing your thing. So, be on the lookout for that. Um, we have, uh, for Toy Review this week, the new Frontier figures, which there's an absolute version of that uh, coming out very soon. You know, the deluxe hardcover slipcase version. Be on the lookout for that, the figures. But we'll get to that. And then... Brian Quinn draws. Brian Quinn draws, finally. We got it back at Wizard World Philly and we haven't been able to air it yet, but we're sending it to you today. So, be on the lookout for all that, but now we're going to shoot over to our toy and statue review. Alright, so now it's time for our toy review, and this week we have the new Frontier figures, Series 1. They're, um, they're designed off of a, a Darwin Cook's uh, book, and they're sculpted by Jonathan Matthews. These are dead on. There's no two ways about it. Go find the new Frontier graphic. They're coming out with an absolute soon, but they have the, the regular uh, graphic now. Put a figure next to, you know, the actual art itself. It is dead on. No two ways about it. This is how, now DC, let's take notes here. This is how art should transfer to a figure. How you're trying to do the Michael Turner uh, look and then put it into a figure, it's not working. So whoever you have doing that, fire them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, whoever, you know, Mr. Matthews, he put his A game forward for these. So now I've never seen the book yet. So I don't know how they look that way. It's dead on. But dead on. they are a really, really nice stylized look. Mm -hmm. um, the proportions are great on them. Kev was pointing out that how often do you get a Wonder Woman that's built and muscular, but doesn't look like a guy. Yep. Almost every Wonder Woman figure, statue we've seen lately, is just very manly, and yeah. she's not. She's, she's feminine, deep, yeah. she's big, she's tough, but she's not manly looking. She's got really, extra grab. Really, really nice. All of them. I mean, the alternate heads, what, who comes with the alternate head? Uh, Green Lantern, Lantern. Uh, she, Wonder she does, Woman. And that's it, but I mean, you know, they all have the extras, and they're all great looking pieces. Yeah, they're this really... Is, I. I um, these are perfect. I could say they're perfect. There's not one thing that I'm like, oh, well, you should have. No, there's no should haves because the should haves were taken care of. Um, Very pretty, nice. The packaging yeah. is awesome. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can't go wrong with these. The, um, there's only one thing. What, Kev, did you have? Kev had to open the blister to get the base out. Yeah. That sucks a little bit that you can't rebox them, but. But the base is well worth taking out. Yeah, it is. The base is awesome base. the way it's done. Um, Actually, let me. At the base, he's got like a little bit of clear to it's it, great, so the man. letters are floating a little bit on the top. It's great. Really, really nicely done. Oh yeah. I love the lasso. The lasso. You know? so it's great. Metallic like thread or something they used. And there's a star underneath you, pervs. Yeah, Check her panties. Her panties have a star on them. It... These are great, man. <sighs> yeah. No two ways about it. These are definitely worth the buy for all of them. Um, I bought a few of them. I got my greasy mitts on uh, a few of them. I'm still waiting to get my hands on, you know, the green arrow one. But they're all worth a buy. They're all great. No complaints. Absolutely none. Now, this, these, are, these are Series 1? These are Series 1. What, do you know what Series 2 would be? What figures would Nothing be in Nothing announced that? yet that okay. I... But th yeah. they are really nice. Again, normally I'm a, more a fan of a of a musculature and a, a big, big... dude. But these but are realistic looking. Awesome, awesome, awesome stylized look. They're oh, so yeah. nice, I'm probably going to have to pick the book up now and see the book. Yeah. Because... Well, there's an absolute that's coming out. You know, the thick bound. Okay, okay. Big one that's coming All out right, very yeah, soon. Yeah, I'm going to have to check it out because yeah. they're a great looking style. Yeah. Mr. Matthews... Get your raise. <laughs> Whoever's doing the turners, take a walk. Sorry, but that's how it works. It's a tough business. Um, so, uh, hey, pick them all up. Every one of them. Not one thing bad to say. And uh, as of late, for me to say that for these DC figures that have been coming out lately. Yeah, they've been pretty tough lately. Yeah, a little, little rough. Yeah. A little rough. Just like that asphalt's going to feel when you're sleeping on it, buddy. 
All right, so uh, Matthews, get your rays. These are great. Uh, pick them up. That's our toy review this week. We'll see you next time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>All right, guys, so this is our summer reading. Let me explain what summer reading is to us, at least, why we're doing this. It's summertime. You guys are going away, wherever you want to go, to get away, to uh, meet up with people. But there's always downtime. And what better a time is it to get some reading done? Now, there's a, lot, a ton of collected editions out that I read, Mike reads, Nick reads, Kevin reads, we all read. And we're just going to give you a few suggestions that, if you don't already have them, to go out, pick them up, and read them because, uh, well, they're great reads. So first, since it's coming out very soon, volume two is coming out of Invincible, but I have volume one. Now, first, if you haven't read Invincible, you should be shot. It's a great read. Robert Kirkman, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Walking Dead. I hope so. Um, because we all have, and we all read it. Robert Kirkman is, he's amazing. He's a phenomenal writer. Now, you take him and give him a fresh idea of a teenage superhero uh, throwing it, you know, into basically a, a high school frame of mind of going through puberty, meeting women, and still trying to juggle being a superhero at the same time and traveling at night to super planets that are far away. This is what the book is. But take that and put a Robert Kirkman spin on it. Now, if you don't know what the Robert Kirkman spin is, well, I think he probably only knows what that is, but... What I could say is, read one issue of Walking Dead, one issue, pick it up at random. Come back, go to your local comic book retailer, say, I want volume one of Invincible. When it comes in, read. you'll read this probably hour and a half. You'll pile through this very fast. Um, it's a quick read. It's very, very in-depth. Um, you basically get a background as to who Invincible is as a character um, and the goings-on before volume two comes out and uh well i can't wait to get my mitts on volume two i i get the issues you know when they come out but i don't read them because i'm an idiot so i get the, the hardcover volume two that's coming out and i will be up to date again so definitely worth a read invincible is great written by robert kirkman can't go wrong all right so next we have batman superman now, this is the first volume of uh, the story. Ed McGuinness, Jeff Loeb. Can you go wrong? No. Ed McGuinness, very cartoony. If you're into cartoony artwork, he's kind of, he's very, um, he, he goes long, is what I'm trying to say, on his artwork. He's very um, in-depth with, like, body mass and, and uh, muscular build, so I enjoy that about his work. Um, you know, and then Jeff Loeb. He's amazing. You know, the pairing of these two and Batman and Superman as a team is great. You can't get any better. Uh, it recently came out with a uh, two-pack of figures uh, from the Batman Superman uh, Series 1 toy line, which is great, and the figures are also a little better, but that's for another time. Um, great read. Definitely a pickup. Um, very, it, it's just another entertaining read. It's got Lex Luthor involved and you know, Batman's villains and Superman's villains, all piled into one book. Definitely a great read. Pick this up. So now I'm going outside the box. All right. Street Fighter. I love Street Fighter. And this I got to pick up at New York Comic Con from the Udon table. It's a limited print of 500 on these. Um, but what this basically is, it's a compendium of artwork and character knowledge and background on what Street Fighter really is, um, where it came from, who who started it. it. It's basically a history of Street Fighter. It's a great book. This book, um, you could still get it in soft cover form. Hardcover, I don't think is available anymore. Um, but this is an amazing book. If you want to learn more about where Street Fighter came from, um, the involvement of, you know, Udon to Capcom and where it started from, it's all in here. Um, you learn basically everything about every character involved in Street Fighter. Um, it even goes into, like, merchandise that's available. Um, 
it's everything. Everything Street Fighter. That's what it should, it should have been called. Um, it's a great book. A great way to kill time. Uh, I, I, I blew through it in, you know, a few days. It's a really big book and a lot of stuff to read. But if you could get your hands on the hardcover, definitely pick it up because it's not available anymore. The softcover, you should be able to go to your local uh, comic book retailer to pick up and get. All these books, all amazing, pretty fast, entertaining reads. Because um, I know you guys are on vacation. You don't want to be hunkered down in your room for hours upon hours or days even reading. These are great quick reads. If you're on the beach just hanging out, you have nothing else to do, you're just laying there getting your tan, pick up a book, read it. Good way to kill time, and hey, I can't think of a better way. So, summer reading, just like in high school. Well, at least when I was in high school. You get your summer reading books, and you have to do a report on them. No, but seriously, guys, you know, if uh, if you read any of these while you're on your vacation, email me, let, let me know what you thought of them. Ricky, you know what, I hate Street Fighter now. I'm sorry! I want to know, though email me. Um, these are all great reads and they're all worth a buy guys so definitely check them out. Alright so you're going away on a trip and you need something to read. Well we're here to guide you through all of the graphic novels that are out there and point out some great books that you should read or if you haven't read you should pick them up and definitely consider them. If you don't we'll hunt you down and kill you. Uh, regardless, uh, my first book this this uh, for summer reading here is the Green Lantern Rebirth. This is a this is a great get to know you for Hal Jordan. It gets you back on track with the whole Green Lantern mythos, and it brings back all the characters. It explains a lot. It's a great springboard if you haven't read Green Lantern before and you've been contemplating picking him up. I'd say start with this. It's a nice hardcover edition that came out. It's not that bad on price either. This is uh, twenty five bucks. It's a good buy. I, and it's a great way to start off with DC if you've been in Marvel Blindsider for like this entire time. Now, let's look back to the past here and look at Infinity Gauntlet. This is a book that got me back into comics a couple years ago. It's old school art, it's Thanos at his best, and it's just all the heroes going up against him because he wields the Infinity Gauntlet, which gives him power and control over just about every force in his own universe. Makes him power, more powerful than all the galactic beings put together, which is a great fight in there. It's Adam Warlock at his best. This is just a great read. And since it was just reprinted, you should be able to find one. Last book is off the beaten path, and it's, uh, it's an independent book. It's uh, Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. This book is just amazing. If you're familiar with Invader Zim, this preludes Invader Zim. It has nothing to do with Invader Zim. It's just really great. It's a fun read. It's a collection of short stories that tell one big tale. So if you want to sit down and do this in like 20 minute bits, you can definitely do that and still get the full effect. Uh, it's in paperback form. This one's only 20 bucks. I'd say if you're looking for something different, uh, something with a lot of dark humor to it, uh, a little bit sick at times, but yet twisted and funny at the same time, this is the book for you. I, this is just one of my favorite books. I read through this every now and then. It shows you a little Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. It shows you growing up Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. And it's just, you can't go wrong with this book. Buy this for no other reason than that it's just fun. It's a fun read and there's no backstory to go with it at all. It's just great. That's Summer Reading List, and if uh, you guys don't like it, well, I can't do any more than choke you out and hope that you force to read it and just beat you up till you do. But you have to read these books. They're just amazing. Well, being Summer Boy, I couldn't help but join in the Summer Reading festivities that we had around here. But I did have to one-up the other guys in the show. I actually have a novel in my Summer Reading List, being Summer Boy and all. So anyway, let's get to the point. The novel that I chose for summer reading was Alien vs. Predator Prey. I know you're saying, Alien vs. Predator, but Paul Anderson screwed that up. He's the biggest moron that Hollywood's ever given money to make a movie to. Well, he had nothing to do with this book. Alien vs. Predator Prey is a really, really good book. You have a powerful character in there that's not trying to be or replace Sigourney Weaver or Ripley. One thing that Fox should learn from that movie. But anyway, goes into a really strong character of these colonists on this one planet that happen to be a planet where predators do a hunting ritual. And the best thing about this book, which they definitely take away from all the Predator movies, they show predators pretty much as people. They show them, they show the young men of the tribes and the clans and, you know, the, the elders on the ship on the way to their hunting ritual planet. And it shows, you know, uh, there's a lot going on with predators. They're, they're not simple-minded creatures. They're very they're just like people. They had conversations. They 
you know, there's struggles going on between different, you know, characters within the Predator clans. They show them as people as they should, but they don't hook it up or, you know, make them lame. It's just, oh, they're talking in their language and we don't understand it, but, you know, to read it in a book, it's a lot easier. So that was good. Aliens were great. There's a nice big swarm of them. Predators F them up. I mean, aliens take down some Predators. There's a somewhat comical scene about two guys who wake up in, in an egg chamber and don't really know what's going on. And... I can't really remember much of it, but the way it was written, it was like the uh, the fear that would come to one if they woke up in an egg chamber and figured out what the hell just happened to me, what did I just drink? But anyway, really good novel, everything that Alien vs. Predator the movie should have been. If you're going on a long plane flight or something, novels are always good, this one's good. The other thing I did was a graphic novel uh, about Django Fett, it's called Django Fett Open Seasons, and it's pretty much how Django Fett becomes a bounty hunter, and then eventually, th as you read the rest of the story, you find out why Count Dooku went to Bo uh, went to Jango Fett to clone him and what kind of things he had to perform in order to be approved for cloning and all those other things. It also has a beautiful, beautiful fight scene between Mandalorians and Jedi. Yeah, Mandalorians and Jedi going head to head. Nice, action-packed snow battle. And my last book is the infamous Long Halloween. If you haven't read it, you should. Written by Jeff Loeb, drawn by Tim Sale. My opinion, one of the one of the best Batman stories ever. Big Batman fan, and I like more of the independent Batman stories, where this one doesn't tie into like, oh, what's something happened in 52 or Infinite Crisis. Just it's Batman doing his thing. One of the best things I think about this book is the fact that it's not really written like a Batman story. It's more of a crime mafia whodunit story with Batman also trying to figure out who did it. Very well written. A lot of great characters in. I mean, you got Two Face, Joker. Awesome scenes with Solomon Grundy. You got the form of, you know, Harvey, uh, Harvey Dent becoming Two-Face. Awesome read. If you haven't read it, definitely buy and read it. It's a nice long chunk of reading, but it goes by. So those are my choices for summer reading. Approved for you by Summer Boy. Okay, I'm here for my summer reading bit. Summer reading for me isn't for vacations, it's for nice cold days in my dark house like a vampire, but this is a wonderful one. This is a Frank Miller Hard Boiled with art by Jeff Darrow. It's old. It came out in the 90s, 1990 actually. Um, these are the originals. I don't have a compilation, the trade of it, but Kevin assures me that they make it. Uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful story. Um, the main guy, who goes by many names, Nixon, Seltzer, Burns, he believes he's a tax collector. Well, he's actually a fully robotic character made up by Wilford Home Appliances, and he is a corporate assassin for them to weed out the competition. But he thinks he's uh, punishing people for not paying their taxes, and it's just wonderful. The other robots that this company have made that have escaped are sentient and figure he is like their savior. If they could just get him to take the corporation out, then these robots can just go away and live somewhere together. The only problem is he's programmed too well, and he's on a great killing spree taking out these robots left and right that he feels are tax uh, fraud people, you know? So that's a wonderful one. I love it. It is available in a trade. I think it's around $16, but uh, if you're a fan of Frank Miller, it's awesome. If you're a fan of unbelievably or a fan of unbelievably detailed art, uh, Jeff Darrow is just unbelievable. It, it's a, it's great, great, great. I love it. All right. For my second one, this may be a little bit harder to find. This is Alien Tribes. This is uh, written by Steve Bissett and artwork by Dave Dorman, and it's amazing paintings in it. It's really more, uh, I guess, well, graphic novel, but it's mostly uh, story. You know, every maybe 10 pages you have a nice plate done by Dave Dorman, and it's just a great story of this kind of uh, a crew of alien hunters almost they are and what they go through there's one guy that's encased in a big giant suit of like robotic not giant 12 foot tall but a big suit of robotic armor that he fights a queen it's just an amazing amazing book i love it it's again another old one from early 90s and i don't know if it's still in print but i'm sure you could track it down a little bit a great read awesome book so uh that's my summer reading have a nice one Everybody knows when you're off on summer, you're on vacation, you're out on the beach, you're sitting in your yard in your beach chair, you need something to read. My summer reading pick, one of them anyway, is this H.P. Lovecraft's Magazine of Horror. 
great, great read because it's not only just one story, it's a compilation of a lot of different stories. And it's not only just H.P. Lovecraft. I know some people, you know, have a hard time with H.P. Lovecraft. He's a little wordy. Time he was writing at, you might not understand him. But if you're looking to try and read some Lovecraft stuff, this is a great place to start. It's an easy read, lots of nice short stories. It's got some no-name authors, it's got a couple Lovecraft poems, but it also has an interesting piece by Richard Matheson, and if you're not familiar with him, he's the author of some of your Night Stalker episodes, Stir of Echoes, and The Legend of Hell House, so you really want to check out that story. My favorite story was the um, Sweet as a Sis story. It's kind of like Nightbreed meets Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. Guy runs a, uh, a sweet shop, he meets some otherworldly characters, it's got some really great drawings that go along with it, too. So you really want to want to pick this up. You can breeze through the stories about 20 minutes or so. So really nice, light, easy reading when you're outside on the beach. My next pick is this Laurel K. Hamilton book. Now, this is her latest book in her series of Anita Blake Vampire Hunter series. Ironically, issue number 13. This book um, kind of details a story between Anita Blake and her Weird, le weird leopard boyfriend and a little kind of side story that they go on. Now the great thing about Laurel K. Hamilton is you can pick up absolutely any one of her books and not be lost. She does really good kind of backtracking through each and every story. Matter of fact when I started reading Laurel K. Hamilton I picked up issue three and I wasn't lost at all. Now these are for your fangirls. These are not for you know it's not a guy read this is more of a chick read so those of you ladies that are out there watching welcome keep watching but you do want to pick up these books it's kind of like horror meets harlequin romance you know it's really bloody really gory werewolves vampires that kind of stuff but a little smutty at the same time too now i know that i think late july sometime in august kevin can correct me on the right date that it's coming out in and i'm sure he's going to put the uh previews guide code these are coming out in comic book form also. So do keep your eyes open. If you do pick up these books, you might want to check out the uh, comic books that are coming out later on in the summer. Those are my summer reading picks. Keep on watching. All right, so I'm here at Artist Alley with our friend Brian Quinn. He's been with us before, as you loyal fans all remember. So, Brian, how's the show been going for you? The show's going very well. Um, today's Saturday. It's been very busy. Uh, I've been sketching all day, selling books. Um, a lot of people I've seen over the years do the Philly show coming up and saying hi. Um, it's great. A lot of new faces, too. It's a great show to come to. And, you know, as you can see by the turnout and, you know, the other dealers here, it is a good show. So, uh, earlier before, Brian did a sketch for me. Yeah, I did like a, um, kind of like a Japanese demon yes. Uh, earlier. Yes. We're going to be showing this sketch and uh, we hope you all enjoy it. So I hope you all enjoyed the sketch as much as I sure will. And uh, we'd like to thank our friend Brian Quinn for stopping, well, letting us film him yet again. And uh, Brian, thanks for letting us do this. Thank you for uh, stopping by. All right, we'll see you at the next show. Will do. I think what we're trying to say here is to take...